Thanks again for staying with us on the show this morning on ITV. Lovely Monday morning. Okay, uh, the organized labor, Nigeria Labor Congress, TUC, major trade centers, uh, had planned uh, an industrial action for today, but that has been suspended uh, for two weeks. But we'll look at the circumstances surrounding the proposed strike, which has now been suspended. Uh, at the beginning of the month of September this month, two quick actions taken by the federal government attracted a lot of reactions. Number one was a hike in electricity tariff and then the increase in fuel price. As is always the case, labor movement doesn't joke with such actions from the government. And so uh, they were supposed to have a showdown today, but after consultations, discussions, and agreements last night, it's been suspended for two weeks, and then We'll just see how that will play out, particularly the hike in electricity tariff. I'm joined by Professor Julius Yasser, former ASU chairman, Uniben. Prof, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me this morning. Good morning, viewers. We also have with us Ahmed Mamudu, is a public affairs commentator. Ahmed, many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Sonny. Good morning, viewers. Let me begin with Prof. Uh, there's a feeling that this action by organized labor, which has now been suspended, is unjustifiable against the background of the economic realities with the country amid the COVID-19. What are your thoughts? Okay, you are talking about, okay, that is the, the four hike, yes. PMS price increase, and uh, uh, maybe VAT increase, you didn't mention that, and then we're also seeing uh, uh, electricity tariff. Of course, uh, it's highly unjustifiable very very unnatural of a labor organization of whose workers are suffering under intense pressure of squalor that they are calling off uh, a strike in this very caustic environment is very very unbecoming but we didn't uh, so many bookmakers of course didn't uh, ever think that any good thing would come out of the current uh, NSC assistance because you know we have posited here before about the great problem that we have in this country which is that the only social uh, class that is left is the ethnic class there's no other one and then if you look across you have to find out who are those that hold sway and then who is the person that you know that presides over uh, administration of this country then you can take a decision of what is going to come out at the end of the day and then we are saying it very very clearly the labor the, one by a code will come out in the open and tell you xyz and all that we are going to do this we are carrying cordes we are carrying all that later in the night at around 12 and all they will go and sit in on the mat and take another decision and so that is what we are seeing here because otherwise there is nothing anywhere that we ever proved to show that this that we're experiencing that labor is that what happened before uh, uh, the current uh, government took over in this country when you know, it was just minimal increase to about 86 naira of pms but then after that i mean people went to so many other places including uh, ojota and you saw very very violent protests against pms uh, increase now this government took over in 2016 and there had been increased to uh, from 86 naira to 145 and let me look at even for the past three months you have had increase in pms three times is this is this right from 121 and now we are buying fuel at 160 even in an environment of covid 19 where countries countries that have human face uh, to their citizens are reducing cost of living some are even uh, saying okay don't pay electric electricity tariff in some cases some countries are paying house rent for citizens and providing food and then this is the time that our own government is increasing things that will impact directly on the common man or the plebeians of this society in fact our country has gone to extreme right what that means that they have become costing capitalists. That is winner takes all. And of course, nobody has strength anymore to protest because everybody is pauperized, everybody is hungry, people are weak, can't even talk, we can't breathe 
because knees are on our neck. So that is what we are saying here. Labor is just, they are playing, you know, very, very unholy politics because they are on, on, in an unholy alliance, I can tell you, with this government. That is what is okay, clear let, here. Let, let me pursue the uh, Professor Jiloshi Yasare. Um, Ahmed. Yes. The, the, the reasons advanced for these hikes that has attracted a friction between organized labor and government, how justifiable? Well, if we want beyond the rhetorics and mere grandstanding, we should always try and address the issues because the elites have a responsibility to address the issues. Now, what are the issues that have brought us to this point? Contrary to what Prof said, the last administration actually left a fuel position of 115 naira per liter, which was not even obtainable in petrol stations. Our memory cannot be so short that we cannot remember the long queues that it used to take to buy fuel, particularly during the Christmas period, which would have been around this time. And so it is, it is plain with the truth when you say things were better then. Things were being managed. When you eventually get into the fuel station or black market, you will buy fuel at exorbitant rates. So what does this mean? At this point in time, we are a more educated society. The truth of the matter is that there are many variables that are outside the control of government that allow these fuel prices to fluctuate. It will interest you to know, Sonny, that kerosene has been deregulated a long time ago. It will further interest you to know that diesel has been deregulated. And, and these two products, I'm talking about over 10 years ago, kerosene is selling over 200 naira per liter. If you want to fight for the common man, your fight should be over kerosene. If you want to fight for manufacturing, your fight should be over diesel. Diesel is over 200 naira. Petrol is the only product that is still subsidized by the government. And who enjoys this subsidy? Truth be told, is the rich people like you and I. The real fuel of the common man is kerosene. And it has been already deregulated a long time ago. So let us refocus ourselves on honest conversations with ourselves. The marketers of petroleum products pulled out from this strike even before NLC announced that they pulled out. What did they say? They said, look, it is inevitable that this product must be deregulated because there are too many factors outside of the control of government for government to keep on subsidizing. And what we are actually subsidizing is a rich lifestyle. One man has five cars, or even if he has only one car, and he's using petrol. Petrol, remember, is specific to a product. Transportation. There is locomotive transportation, there is air transportation, and then there are other forms of fuel. So, what are we saying? We are saying that the downgrade in the whole world economy that has led to reduced prices of crude, higher landing cost of this crude when it comes here, we are not refining, poor refining capacity here, distribution costs, and the profit margin. That is why this thing keeps on fluctuating up and down. And it is also not true to say that government is insensitive. At the time of COVID-19, Government was paying, government proposed to pay the electricity bills for people. But you see, because it's a private enterprise, the private practitioners made it difficult for government to follow through with that policy. So it's, it's important that we keep the truth in perspective so that when we're having conversations, we have conversations that are grounded in the reality so that our people know what to expect. Now, let me stretch this a little bit. <clears throat> the worst case scenario for petrol, worst case scenario at international price of crude oil of $65 per barrel. That's the highest it has ever gone yeah. historically. The worst case scenario is that petrol will sell at 200 naira per liter. That's the forecast. That will make petrol still cheaper than kerosene. That will make petrol still cheaper than diesel. In any economy, diesel and kerosene are more important than petrol. But our elites, out of selfishness, they keep fighting for petrol. The truth is that petrol must be deregulated. That is the reality 
of the economy of the world today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Prof, yeah. uh, I'd like you to deep in it further. Yes, yeah, I, 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 I thought you were going to caution on an uh, attack on personality when you talk about honest uh, discussions and things like that. That, uh, that is not too fair okay. when we look at this okay. thing. But I apologize. Let's, yes, okay. but let, let's, let's look at this. I, I expect my co-discussant to base all that he has said on research findings. To find out, you know, if you go on our roads, try find out how many of diesel uh, vehicles transport plantain, yams, and all that to the market. That is one. Two, to also go into homes to now find out how many of our citizens now use kerosene that is near unavailable to cook. Now, what we find is that people are hewing woods or trees down in homes to cook, and a few others, and so many others are using gas. I can hardly, because I discuss with large body of people as students in class, we hardly find those who now cook with kerosene. So we have to base so many of these projections on research finding. If you call your, your staff here now and ask them, what do you use in your home to cook? I'm sure that you hardly find anyone that is using kerosene to cook their food. So what we are seeing here is, you know, and see, my co discussion have also said that during COVID, the government wanted to reduce or propose, to use these words, to use, to, 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 to uh, grant free electricity to homes out there, but that the people refused. The, <laughs> the, 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 the private sector, the owners. Uh, yes, yes. The, the frustrated government. Can you, I, I, I don't know whether I have seen something here. Government is the one that appointed or employ the private owners. Government is the owner of the electricity business in this country. They have only just hired contractors to dispense this electricity to our citizens. And then the same persons you have hired are the ones that are telling you what to do with your product. It's a very big question. I will leave that to the public to look into to argue. But the truth about it is that what we are saying is, if you look at the situation, I know that we need, there's, 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 there, there are maybe reasons why we must at times need to protect government and all that, because it depends on where we stand. You know, this same government inherited dollars. I'm not praising the previous government. Please, I shouldn't be accused that I'm praising the previous I have not said they have also done well, too well. Okay. Uh, for very many leaders or rulers, they are not leaders, they are rulers of this country, they've not done well. Because if you are doing well, I don't need to hear that individuals are cutting money away in terms to, to private accounts and all that. We have been hearing that for a very long time. So I can't say any of them. But however, if we look at the current government, because they took over promising Nigerians that they were going to change the narrative that we have in this country. You look at, you took over when uh, Nigerian Naira was about 160 to a dollar. Before you know it, it has jumped to 360. And as I speak with you today, it's close to 500 Naira. Can you imagine what that will mean? If you calculate your salary, what you are earning, you understand? I know that internationally, everybody say, okay, PMS on average is about 300 naira, you know, per liter. But find out in such climes what, what salaries are paid out to, to their citizens. Is it for a professor of five years? You know, I keep mentioning my salary here. Professor of about six, six years, then I still earn about 300,000 naira a month. You convert 300,000 naira to, to dollars. 
And then, of course, I will lead that to also our listeners to, to do on their own. And that is where, and that is where we are. <clears throat> you understand? Why I'm quarreling with you, you look at, on the 8th of September, the organized labor had gone to River State to go protest the lockup of NSC Secretariat by the government of River State. On the 8th, <laughs> and that was before the election that was coming up in those states. Or maybe because of the personality they have seen that is going to be involved in the election. And then you have gone there. And the old affiliates of labor, Pokta Court was agog with protesters. But then the government, were, they were smart, smarter than NLC. And then they handled that matter behind the scene. If you could do that for just locking up uh, NLC office, and the government was saying that part of the uh, uh, building, which they built for NLC, is not okay, that they were doing repairs and all that. If you could do that against such government that is even available, then look at petrol price, look at VAT, look at uh, electricity, that impact directly on the citizens of this country. Whether you like it or not, anybody, whether it's the big man that is in fear or that is providing service. Yeah. And then the man is definitely going to add the cost, the increase to his service. Yeah. And somebody is going to pay it. And so at the end of the day, the whole thing trickles down. And so what we're saying that it, why can't governments, since they are also buyers of all these vehicles, put tax on the cost of vehicles? Or decide that if you're, if you're on this scale in, gov in government, you can't own more than this type of car. There are other ways we can regulate this economy, and then the, the, the plebeians, let me use that word, will be happy. Okay. Why would they do that? Okay, let, let me push it there, Prof. Um, the federal government, <coughs> from what the paper said today, that if Nigeria goes back on these new uh, regimes of prices for fuel and then for uh, electricity tariff, the World Bank and IMF will not be happy with the country. Um, in, in the midst of uh, this conversation, how, how, do you, how do you look at that you know, line of reason on part of the federal government? It looks like we are more or less executing an agenda of the IMF and the World Bank. Well, that's taking that um, conversation out of context. The truth of the matter is that every country operates in the, in the world economy and the world economy is regulated by certain players, IMF, World Bank, um, Bank of Agri, et cetera, et cetera. And they will tell you the conditions under which they would loan you money if you need money to execute either projects, recurrent expenditure, whatever. And one of those conditions, precedent, is that your country should not be paying subsidies on what they term luxury items. And whether you like it or not, however you choose to have this conversation, petrol is a luxury item. And the truth of the matter is that the government cannot continue to subsidize that product. So what you have seen is government handing over the price modulation of that product to PPMC, I mean, uh, the Petroleum Regulatory Agency, that tells you if the product lands at this cost, this is where it will end, X, Y, and Z. So this is what you are seeing playing out. It's not so much as an agenda that is being played now. It is the reality of the world economics mm. right now. I'm happy that Prof highlighted that he's aware that petrol is selling in the international market at about 300 naira per, li per, per liter. liter. Okay. So that is the reality. But if we are even landing it at less than that, we might be doing something right. Okay. But the light at the end of the tunnel is not only where we are now, but government is in charge of looking at the sum of the economy. There are a lot of these modular refineries that are going to come on stream over the course of the next three months. Dangote refinery is also coming up very exactly. soon. And some of these things will help to reduce the impact and cushion the effect of the importation of this product. Because what we are now 
is a wholesale importer of petroleum products. I don't know if you saw it, the um, GMD of NNPC came out the other day. Uh, I think his name is Kiari. And he said, it is not helpful for our economy that NNPC is the sole importer of petroleum products. At a point in time, when some of these refineries come in, there will be the injection of their own product. And of course, that will help to bring this thing down. So yes, nobody is saying that this is the perfect point we are. Mm. Everybody is unhappy. But the reality is that the greater good will be served by removing this subsidy now, so that in the long run, even those refineries can now compete favorably in a deregulated economy. Mm. That is the argument that is being made. There is a lot of hardship. You will not find me arguing that there is no hardship. Yes, there is a lot of hardship. But sometimes there is no other option. The whole world economy is depressed as a result of the stagnation that COVID-19 caused. And everybody is having to try and be imaginative in finding ways to cut the fat out of governance, to reduce the expenses where it is ne or it's, it's not necessary, and focus on surviving. That's where we are as a country. We are focusing on surviving. Okay. Uh, mm. Prof, yes. Yes. Mm. I have a problem. Mm. The problem is with this subsidy. For how long, Tony, have you been hearing of subsidy? The major item of campaign by the chief executive of this government is subsidy. And when he came on board, we heard that they have removed subsidy from petrol. And that was why, what I thought precipitated the reason for decrease of PMS to 121 naira in June from 145. Hello, sir. So I thought that it was the deregulation, the removal of subsidy that precipitated that. So for how long? And the same, the same, the same uh, 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 government campaigns vi viciously with it. That subsidy is a scam. It's one way of, you know, draining Nigerian economy, draining Nigerian money, and all that. How come that subsidy is reverberating again? I'm, I, I, I'm taken aback. I thought that, you see, so many persons, some from Bush Radio, have said that this same fair price is going to stand at a minimum of 200 naira in Nigeria, preparing ground for the landing of Dangote fuel. And so occasionally, because some also have also said, who is the man behind the mask in Dangote's business? And so if his business now determines what happens in Nigeria, a one-man <coughs> business, supposedly, then we are in deep problem. That is what we are seeing here. That is what so many persons have said. And my discussion has also just brought it. Now I mentioned his name and all that. And first people are saying they are waiting for just preparing ground for him to be able to come into the market at a profit or thereabouts. But we have crude is selling cheap in the international market now. So how come that the prices of PMS is not being increased? Why? Because I, I, the, the, the fuel is derived from crude oil. So why? Everybody, we are saying that we don't have money because the price of, of, of crude, you know, is slow or cheap. So why then, and you refine, crude is, crude is what gives PMS. Then how come that even when crude is cheap, you are still increasing? Simple. It's simple distillation that gives rise to PMS. To high molecular weight arcanes and all, you crack and get more PMS and all that. So I'm really worried. We, we did the mathematics earlier here on how much it is to produce a liter of fuel from maybe a, a liter of crude. Or how many liters of food? We've done all that before. So what Nigerian government is doing here is that I think they will not really, we've not had the courage to really tackle the problems of this country. Okay, 
if you now say, okay, you want to go to an international market, uh, uh, let fuel in Nigeria sell at the at price. international rate. rate. Mm. Then take every other thing to the international rate. <laughs> pay, yes, pay salaries as is obtainable outside the country. Then, apart from that, those who work in some of these establishments of government, where all these things are determined, bring their prices down because these are the same people who are able to corruptly enrich themselves in one way or the other. But however, the one we see, bring their salaries down to what Abi, is anybody in any way saying that his brain is better than that of a professor in the Nigerian university? It was not like that in the past. I've said here before, after the president of the country, then the next chief, chief uh, 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 attorney general of the, the attorney general of the federation, then the next person in terms of salary scale is the professor. But how, what are we seeing today? So because everybody go to the market, even the common man, you people who work here in the media, let there be an average because we all go to the same market. Not now that you are hearing. Let me tell you, the same weekend they were protesting against the other day, pays in his university, a professor earns 2.2 million naira a month in his university. And a professor in a federal university is earning 300,000 in the same market. You ask what an NNPC staff earns, and ask me whether an NNPC staff works more than. Many of our colleagues that have gone to uh, uh, work in Shell and all of them on sabbatical gets there and say that they don't really do much, there's no job. The people who do even the jobs in share are contractors. Do you understand? But then if you hear their take home and all that. So what we are saying is that if we really want to regulate, regulate everything. Okay, Prof, let me pause you there. Um, Ahmed, are you concerned with the fact that uh, just some few months back, uh, there's supposed to be a new minimum wage that has not been implemented? And then now, uh, we're having, we have the hike in fuel price, the hike in the electricity tariff, which has now been suspended for about two weeks. How do we juxtapose these two extremes? Let me tell you from a personal point of view, I've always proposed that the minimum wage <clears throat> should be tied to a factor of political wages. That has always been my own personal opinion. Okay. Let me give you a simple example. For example, if the governor is earning 100,000 Naira, I believe the minimum wage should be tied to a percentage, let's say, for the sake of argument, 10% of political um, wages and salaries, so that we don't have to have this recurring fight for minimum wage. The moment politicians raise their, their own money, the minimum wage will go automatically, up, automatically goes up. so that we will not be having all these unnecessary conversations. Because it's unfair that political office holders will be collecting so much money, and the hoi poloi are always having perennially to struggle to increase the minimum wage. That's on a personal note. But looking at it from the government's point of view, when you increase the minimum wage, there are a lot of factors that come into play. First of all, you have to consider all the players in that sector. Not all your states are financially buoyant enough to pay an increased minimum wage. That is always the common argument. But if you put that side by side with the fact that the chief executive of the states are all collecting security votes that are unaccounted for, you now have to wonder where the priorities are. There is so much wrong with our polity. There are many issues that have to be addressed. But we can only have these conversations if we are honest and truthful. The insinuation that somebody is keeping the, the, the fuel price for Dangote to enter the market it's not only fair, unfair, it is unrealistic. Because we know that competition drives down prices. Yeah. So if Dangote is going to come in with petroleum products and all the other modular refineries are going to enter that same market, we should expect that the influx of all these products should drive down the prices. It is important that we always have conversations that are based on what is real and what is obtainable. The professor also mentioned let me quickly address that. He said, research has been done where people say they are using gas and kerosene. You see, we have what is known as elite disconnect in Nigeria. Because the people he knows use gas, 
he has made the argument for gas. It is not the reality. I talked about firewood, though. Yes, you said firewood. And, yeah. and, and, but yeah. the and truth I talked of about it, students in class. But yeah. the truth of it is that you didn't even provide the basis of this your research. You haven't <laughs> even let us interrogate the figures that you have put forward. The reality is that kerosene is known worldwide as the poor man's fuel. Yeah. This is not something we need to argue about here. But they don't even, they can't even access it. No. They can't access it. they can't access it. So, heat so here. if we are fighting, if we are fighting for petrol, yeah. are we not fighting for the wrong product? We are even making the same point. Okay. We should be fighting for kerosene. Diesel is the manufacturer's fuel where they cannot find light. So if you have prices that are high in the marketplace, it may be as a result of the higher cost of diesel. Shouldn't we be fighting for those ones? But we are fighting for petrol, which is actually a rich man's fuel. So the conversations that we have mm. should be based on what is proper, what is real, and bringing in factors that we know is justifiable. OK. Now, the strike has been suspended by organized labor. So what next? That has always been the <laughs> question. You have a job first before <laughs> we go to <laughs> what next. I'm listed, uh, limited by time. Uh, yes. uh, uh, your, your staff that are on the field need to do a job for us here. Okay. That is, find out in an open market what many of them used to. That is the way we do research. Mm. You go to, let them help the station also. Because I'm very pleased with your station because uh, you, are, uh, you are solving problems. That is what we are seeing here from all that, we, that uh, exudes from this station. Okay. Now, I'm sure that the Nigerian public is very, very happy with that. So let them help us to establish what the po major population of this uh, country use in, in their kitchens. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll look, we'll look yes. into that. But yes. Yeah, going forward. Uh, yeah. yeah, going forward, the sus uh, suspended, yes. suspended strike. What yes. next? Uh, you see, uh, I'm, I, I, I have always believed that it's unlikely that labor is going to come up with anything. But then I know that there are groups like JAF, Joint Action Front, and all that. So many others. The major strike that is going to come, which is, you know, uh, snowballing, will even start, just like it was with the Arab Spring, where it was a little boy who was pushing wheelbarrow, started the issue, and then that cut across nations, you know, in the in North Africa. That also you are seeing here because, <laughs> you know, a day comes, a man continues to star at the ceiling because of no food in the stomach. Anything he sees next, he will eat. That is just it. You have seen it. So many cases where there are places where you can't just drive a choice vehicle to and all that. There are environments like that. It is because of anger. And that is what you are going to see. Okay. If the Nigerian government continues like this, and then labor is hand in gloves mm. with government, mm. you know, playing the establishment issue and all that, a day comes. That is the way it is in the Bible. Right. Um, you say what a next? day comes. Yes. Yeah. What, what next? Mm -hmm. um, Sonny. Strike suspended. Now, what next? Strike suspended. Mm. Let us downplay these doomsday conspiracy theories and end of the world scenarios. Mm. Let us focus on what is real and what is happening. The NLC has sat down with the government overnight and they've discussed these issues. And so the NLC has decided that let us allow a little more dialogue so that some of the issues that are outstanding can be discussed and then they can decide if there are areas of commonality where they can have discussions. For example, the leadership of the National Assembly came out and said, look, we are preparing a budget where we are hoping that we will be able to accommodate some of the palliatives that you are proposing. Mm -hmm. So it's a continuous discussion. Okay. The labor is trying to accommodate the government, and the government is trying to accommodate labor. But the truth about it is that we have to believe that both parties are working for the interest of Nigerian people. The reality is that the world economy is depressed. Everybody is looking for means to adjust and how to make a bad situation better. Okay. So if labor is calling off the strike now, they didn't call it off indefinitely. They said they are giving two weeks mm -hmm. to sit down more with government and interact and see how much more 
they can come to terms to move the country forward. Okay, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt that for ultimately uh, all things will work together for the good of the average. Sonny, before you round up, yes. in this country, mm. at a price hike like this, a government promised that they were bringing out buses to cushion the effect of price hike. Did you ever see any boss on Nigerian roads? Okay, prof, let's, let's Is that not that. what we are seeing? Let's, let's leave promises it, let's, let's promises that for today. Without action? I'm sure we we'll have more times to uh, talk more. It's still TMI Monday. Prof, thank you for coming. Thank you. Amen, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. We'll take a short break. And uh, a major event coming up on uh, October 1st, uh, Independence of Wewe, Nigeria, is on Thursday. Some of our sponsors are here. We'll talk with them in a moment. Stay with us.